Shall we remain standing just a moment while we bow our heads for prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this grand, glorious privilege we have of gathering once more tonight to serve Thee, to express our feelings of love and songs and, and praises to Thee, our great Maker and Creator. We thank Thee for every soul that's here and pray that there will not be any of them lost, not one, at that great day. May they all be saved. And Father, we pray that tonight that the Holy Spirit will take possession of the meeting and now and will manifest His Self, His power, to this audience. May the sick be healed tonight, Lord, because they look at Calvary and see that great, all-sufficient sacrifice that was made for them there. God express love to the world, his feeling towards the sick. God, may we not spurn it tonight. May we look to it and believe. For we ask it in Jesus' name, thy Son. Amen. Give an expression of my love and appreciations of the Lord Jesus Christ to you, word and praying that this night will mean much to every one of us, that God's love will be to us all. Now, last evening I was speaking or giving testimonies uh, to my great uh, handicap. Brother Baxter leaves us tonight. of the Word, God will bless His Word. He's going to bless His Word. So now, in St. Matthew's, the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse, just the beginning of Jesus' fame, we read this, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and diseases among the people. And His fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto Him all the sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those that were possessed with devils, and those that were lunatics, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And of course, as always has been my theme, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His present attitude hasn't changed from what it was at that day. Now, as each night... We have people coming into our services who have probably newcomers. And in the fore part of the meeting, we had kind of a, something we had to cool nights and so forth, so we just had to kind of sit down and, and explain the, the way that divine healing works, the best of our knowledge. So I gave these few nights now for testimony of things that has happened. If I would try to tell one hundredth of the things that's happened, I'm afraid we'd have a very long meeting here. It would take weeks and months to get through it, what our Lord has done. No wonder he said, These things that I do shall you also, and greater, not greater in, in quality, but greater in quantity, because no one could do greater than he did in quality. He stopped nature, raised the dead, but he still does it. And he's just the same today as he's ever been. One night, if the Lord willing, I'd like to give you the, the straight of the little boy being raised in the dead in Sweden, or Finland, rather. One of the most marvelous things I've seen in all the days of my ministry. Of course, it was by vision. Last evening, I was telling you of Mrs. Georgie Carter at Milltown, Indiana, who had been healed with tuberculosis. At the same time at my first revival there at the Milltown Baptist Church, Reverend Mr. Hall, which was formerly a, a member of the Nazarene Church and had backslidden, and he had gotten very bitter and cold against all Christianity. And he was converted during one of my meetings there and now is a pastor there. After returning from California from the, when Mr. Upshaw was healed, and if you'd like to write Mrs. Carter... She'd be glad to send you her and a doctor and so forth so that you could speak to her. Any testimony that's given her in the books, 
It's just there ever one bona fide doctor's statement. So you, you're willing to search them down. Many, they went through the critics. But every time, God has proved himself to be just the same as he's always been. And in the book, probably some of you read of that night when the maniac run to the platform out there in Oregon was going to take my life. Someone said, Brother Benham, was you scared? I said, no, sir. Not a bit. As long as Jesus is there, as long as he told me to do this, and I'm in his will, there's nothing to fear. See? As long as you're doing what he says do, and you know you're directly led, well, then there's nothing to fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. There's no fear in God. Love takes away fear. Now, I know tonight I believe in divine healing. I believe that at divine healing it's some day the great churches now who are refusing this great work of God will see some day that the power of God to heal the sick is just the same as it's been all down through the ages. You see, It's just the people has been taught different. That's the reason they don't have faith for divine healing. They're taught that those things are past. My friends here from Africa, how amazing it was when we got to Africa to find out. Many of the missionaries had been over there and passed out tracts and so forth, talked to them about Jesus. But when it come to healing, they said, those things are gone. They don't do it no more. And when even the desert drums beat the victory, when they heard that Jesus was the healer, that's why we had 30,000 converts in one day. Is because that they seen the power of the God that they wanted to serve, but had been told by their missionary that his power, as far as anything more than saving you, was finished. There was no divine healing. But when they seen him straighten out the cripple, make the blind to see, the deaf to hear, and the dumb to speak, they fell on their faces and gave praise to God. I got a paper coming from Durban. Word said immediately after the meeting that there was such true conversions to they'd taken seven van loads of farms and watches and things that the natives had stole out of just one tribe, returned them back. Seven van loads. If they come and give them up, they wanted no more to do with it. Standing in a conference or a gathering of ministers in my own church, after coming back, some of the doctors of divinity said, Brother Brandon, we'd like for you to speak tonight. Oh, how it made me feel to get to stand and say, Brethren, the minister that ordained me was present. I said, what you said that I had a nightmare. I said, we sent missionaries to Africa for the past hundred years. And when I got over there, I found them packing mud idols, calling themselves Christians. But I said, what you call fanaticism, what you call the devil's work, one more souls to Christ in five minutes than all the missionaries we've sent in a hundred years and the millions of dollars that we spent. Brother, sister, the church ought to get in God's program. Then the church will move all right. Just like suppers and dinners and so forth to appropriate money. That's not God's way of doing it. Pay your tithes. That's what God wants you to do. See? Just keep in God's program. And he'll bless the giver and so forth. He promised it. So if we substitute something else, just like we've substituted theology today to take the place of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it'll never work. It can. We've substituted multitudes instead of power. It'll never take the place of power. God is power. He's the almighty God. The power of all powers is God. This Baptist minister that I was speaking of, Mr. Hall, the Reverend William H. Hall, Milltown, Indiana, pastor of the Milltown Baptist Church. He'd been a close friend of mine for years after he was converted in the meeting. He'd been a great believer in divine healing. And while I was in California, where I was speaking last night at the healing of Congressman Upshaw and many, come home, my wife, which is present tonight, told me that I... Brother Hall was laying dying with a cancer. Well, you'd imagine how that would make me feel to see that 
wonderful, gallant soldier of God was going to die. I said, well, honey, who is his doctor? She said, Mr. Dillman, I think. Well, Dr. Dillman is a bosom friend of mine. And I certainly like him real well. And uh, so I thought I'd call up Dr. Dillman before going down to Mr. Hall's, but he wasn't in his office, so he's from Cardin, Indiana. So I went on down to see Mr. Hall, and there he laid have lost about 60 or 70 pounds in the last four or five weeks of his suffering. And he's just as yellow as a pumpkin. And I asked what was his trouble. He said, Brother Branham said, I got cancer. He says, it's on the liver. He says, I suppose I'm finished if God doesn't help me. Well, I, I love the man, so I knelt down and had prayer with him with all my heart. I asked God to heal him. But I got up and went home. And the next morning I called up to see how he was getting along. He was getting worse all the time. So they said that um, I forget the specialist name in New Albany who had taken the x-rays at, uh, at the St. Edward's Hospital in New Albany, Indiana, that um, he was the one who had taken the x-rays. So the next day I got a hold of Dr. Dillman and I asked him about Mr. Hall. He said, well, Brother Branham, <coughs> Mr. Dr. McCulley is the man's name. He said, uh, we take him up there and take an x-ray. He says he's got cancer on his liver. And there's nothing we can do about it. It's too far advanced to operate. He says there's nothing we can do about it now. The man is dying. I said, I hate to hear that, Dr. Dillman. He said, yes, he was a fine man, Brother Branham. So then so I, I went out to see Mr. Hall that day, and, and he was very, very low. I prayed for him again. My wife wanted to see him, and my mother-in-law and my secretary, Brother Cox, he wanted to see him also, so we all got a delegation, went out that night to see him, because we know he couldn't last but a little while. And um, he was almost past speaking to us, yet we all gathered in and had prayer, sang a hymn, and had prayer, and went out. And on the road out, Miss Hall said, Brother Branham, isn't there one thing you can do? I said, Sister, all I can do is pray, just like you're doing. And she's a very fine woman. They'll probably be up here this weekend. I like to hear him testify. And so he, um, he said, isn't there one thing, you know, is there another doctor? I said, now, doctors are just like anything else. You've got to have confidence in your doctor. If you don't, there's no need to call him. She said, would you suggest anyone else? I said, of course, my pal, one of my pals here in the city, is a boy I went to school with, Dr. Sam Adair, one of the best specialists I think the country's got anywhere. And so... We're real bosom friends, have been for 25 or 30 years. He wrote a letter to the Medical Association of Louisville the other day about my services. If I'd have made it up myself, or some of my uh, a minister couldn't have made it any nicer and better, that sent it to the Medical Association in Louisville. These thousands of them going out. So then uh, I said, I'd, I'd, I'd like for him to look at him. He said, she said, all right. And I called up Dr. Adair, and I said, he said, now, Brother Branham, the only thing we can do is to send the man down to the, the hospital and take x-rays. So that's all I could do. He said, if, if the doctor's already taken x ray at the hospital, I'll go read the x-rays. He said, I'll tell you when I come back, if it's true or not. Well, I said, well, it'd just help her a little. So he went out and read the x-rays. He come back. He said, uh, he, we know one another. I call him Sam, and he calls me Billy. So I, he said, Billy, said, the man's going to die. He's got cancer in his liver. That's all. So I said, is there something you could do to help some way or some other doctor? There's a specialist in Louisville. I believe it's Dr. Abel, I believe was his name. He has a clinic. So he said, I could send him over there, but it's just the only thing he could do is take x-rays. He said, you'd have to get him out of the bed there. And said, you might as well leave him easy while he's easy as what he is. Well, I went and asked Mrs. Hall. She said, well, if, if anything can be done, take him, uh, Brother Bram. So, well, they sent the ambulance down, picked him up, and took him over to doctor in Louisville. And they brought him back. Of course, they wouldn't tell Miss Hall. they tell the doctor. So the doctor called Dr. Sam Adair and said, the man's gone. That's all. So there's nothing can do for him. So Dr. Adair called me up and said, Billy, said, your friend Reverend Hall is going to, here's the expression he made, says he's going to jump overboard in the next four days. Said he'll be gone within four days. He can't last over that. So that, that's the news. I said, my Dr. Adair, I said, I hate to hear that. He said, sure, we all do. I said, there is nothing you can do in the medical realm for him. I said, not a thing, Billy. He said, we can't take the man's liver out and him live. 
and said, there's nothing to do. He said, if he's a preacher, I guess he's ready to go. I said, oh, yes. But he's only about 54, 55 years old. And I said, he could preach the gospel yet and so many things he could do. I just hate to see him go that young. I said, although I believe he'll step right out of this life into the other because he's a real Christian. And um, anybody here know Will Hall from Milltown, Indiana? Reverend Will Hall, raise up your hand. Sure, there's people sitting here that know him. And so he, um, he was a very fine man. So I said, well, you say he's going to die. He said, without a doubt, Billy, he said he'll be dead within four days. He said the cancer spread, looked like a big spider sitting right in, the, in his liver and just spread out like that. He said it's already take, eat him up. I said, well, all right, thank you, Dr. Darren. I, I went down. I called Mrs. Hall. I said, Sister Hall, I hate to tell you this. But I said, Dr. Dare said the doctor in Louisville said he'd be dead within four days. And she started crying, leaned over on her, just an old mother like. And I said, Sister Hall, I hate. I said, Brother uh, uh, Branham, is there one thing that you. I said, Sister Hall, and I, I've done all I know to do, just, just pray. That's all I can do. The doctor's done all he can do, so if it's the man's time to go, our dear brother will cross right through the veil into glory. And I said, that's all we can do. Well, she was very sad. That night I took the family and went out again to see him again. He could just barely talk to me. And I was born in the state of Kentucky. And is there any people around here believe in squirrel hunting? Let's see your hand. Well, that's all right. And I just want to know if I was home or not. Uh, uh, I like to go squirrel hunting sometimes. <laughs> I come up, you got a good woods around here. So I thought the next morning at, I had to go to Erie, Pennsylvania, and was coming back, and was going overseas. I was to be gone, Brother Baxter and I, a group for about six weeks. So there's so many people crammed and jammed up in the house and so forth. I was just about worn out and just coming from California, too, and Brother Baxter done went through and got his family in Vancouver and was going to meet him up in Ohio, Toledo, and then going over into Erie. And there's probably people who's at that meeting up there that's here tonight. And so then it was, I went and I told, next morning I said uh, to my wife, I said, Honey, I'm going to go out and go in the woods. I doubt whether I get squirrel hunt because I'm so sleepy. We got the house empty about 12 or 12.30. And I went and got my little old 22 rifle and set it down in my old overalls. And I rolled them up in the corner. So I set the clock to alarm at 3 o'clock so I get up and go the squirrel hunting, get away in the woods, maybe till it, after a day then I could go to sleep, rest a little before going up into the next meeting. And about 3 o'clock, the clock alarmed, and I, I woke up and turned it off. Poor wife was sleeping so sound it never even moved her. So I got up and pulled on my overalls and went to the den room, looked out the window, nobody out there. I thought, well, it's all right then. It must be all right for me to go. So I'm got my little old rifle and started through the room to go towards the bath. And when I, I did, I looked hanging here on the, by the wall a little old apple about that big around. It was all, you know what a naughty apple we call, all you Hoosiers here, you see, all worm-eating and sour-looking, just a little bitty fellow about like that, very faulty-looking, hanging there. And I said, well, what did my, what did me, that's my wife, I said, why did she hang that thing on the wall for? I never thought, well, I, I don't understand why she'd put a little old naughty-looking apple like that and hang it on the wall. Well, I was, the, the light from the hallway was just showing in a little. I could see it hanging there. And I thought, well, what? And I happened to look, and it wasn't hanging on the wall. It's hanging right in the air. Well, then I knew that that was coming from home. So I slipped my rifle in the corner and threw my hat down the corner and knelt down. I said, what would you have your servant know, Lord? And I noticed, and down come another little one just like it, and another one, and another one, until five of them hung there. And then down came a great big apple, approximately that big around, that was uh, yellow with red streaks in it. Beautiful looking, healthy apple, and it just made a great grabbed like that and swallowed one of them up, then two, then three, then four, then five. And the apple went away, and above it, hanging right where the apple was, was this here hanging there. It's going... I just kept real quiet. I said, what would you have your servant do, Lord? And he said, rise, 
and go tell Brother Hall that thus saith the Lord, you'll not die but live. No squirrel hunting that day. I jerked off my overalls, went and woke my wife up. She's sitting in here somewhere. And I said, Honey, I have just saw a vision. Brother Hall's going to live. And she said, Is he? I said, He's going to live. She said, Nothing can stop it. So I put on my other clothes and went down. And they were just rubbing his hands. And he was crying and, and everything. And I said, Well, I went in. Miss Hall said, Oh, Brother Billy, he's fixing to go. Said he's, We've been looking for him to go all night. And I said, you think he would know me? She said, oh, I think he will. And I went in. I said, gather all the people in, out of the yard where they're setting up with him. I said, bring them in the house, for I have thus saith the Lord. She said, is it good? I said, yes. And the poor old thing started screaming and falling on her knees. I said, come now and stand near. I said, Brother Hall, can you hear me? And he kept saying, Maddie, Maddie, that's his wife. And she said, it's Brother Bill talking to you. So I said, Brother Hall, do you hear me? I was shaking him. He turned over his weary eyes. He said, oh, Brother Bill, I thought I'd done gone over. He said, I haven't gone yet. And I said, and you're not going, Brother Hall, now. I said, a while ago I was starting to go hunting, and I repeated the vision to him. I said, Brother Hall, how long have you been sick? He said, Maddie, how long have I been sick? She said, now, let's see, you're taking sick in a certain month. It's just exactly five months. I said, that's what I thought. <laughs> and five little old naughty apples. But thus saith the Holy Spirit of God, you're going to live. So the judge of the city, the ex-judge, his sister married Mr. Hall's brother. So she was there. She said, how's the man going to live with a cancer in him like that? I said, I don't know. But God said he was going to live. And that satisfies when he says that it's going to be. She said... You mean that he's going to live? I said, yes, ma'am. And I turned around, just so happy, walked out, Brother Cox and all of us, and we went out and got in the car, and poor Brother Hall was just with his feeble hands, and I'm holding him up like that. He was saying, thank you, dear Jesus. I'll preach as long as you give me breath to preach, and giving God praise before it ever happened, before anything took place. But God had already said so. So I went home, and I called the doctor. I said, Dr. Sam... You can call him Dr. Sam Adair, Jeffersonville, if you want to. He has a big clinic there. I said, Dr. Sam? He said, yes. I said, you know the Reverend Mr. Hall that you said is going to jump overboard in four days? He said, yes, he is. I said, no, he isn't. I said, he's going to live. He said, oh, Billy, how can he live with a cancer on his liver? I said, I don't know, but God just showed me a vision. I said, Dr. Adair, how many times have you seen it? He said, well, Billy... I said, I don't want to doubt your word, son. But look, the old doctor will have to see that one. <laughs> I said, well, you won't die with old age and he, until you see it. And he said, well, when is it going to happen? I said, I don't know. He said, is he healed now? I said, I don't know. But God said he wasn't going to die with that cancer, and he isn't going to die. He said, well, I'll have to see it. I said, you'll see it. He said, when are you leaving? I said, tomorrow. I was gone six weeks I come back, and we had a, a one night at the high school gymnasium at Jeffersonville. Well, they had about 4,000 inside, about 4,000 outside. The next day, I was fixing to leave for New York to go to Africa. And just as I got on the platform about this time, I just got in the late afternoon, went on down to the meeting, and my son and them brought me in. I got on the platform, and they were down, had to hurry and give out prayer cards while we were in the meeting because we just got in. The people were packed and jammed into the streets. And I happened to look, sitting up here in the bleachers, was Dr. Dillman from Cardin. I said, I'm glad to see you, Dr. Dillman. He bowed his head. I happened to look, sitting over here, and there's Dr. Baldwin from Jeffersonville. His wife had just been healed with asthma, sitting in my house. He put his arms around me and just cried there at the house, said, Billy, she's just as normal as she can be. I said, I'm glad to see you, Dr. Baldwin. He nodded his head. And I have to look standing way back in the back, and there stood Dr. Sam Adair. Couldn't get in. He was standing in the doorway. And I said, glad to see you, Dr. Adair. And, he, and I have to look sitting over here, and here sat Brother Hall. <laughs> I, I said, Dr. Dillman, you remember your patient, Mr. Hall? Yes, sir. And I said, Dr. Adair, you remember I told you about he's going to live? He said, yes. I said, you said you'd have to see it, didn't you? <laughs> 
I said, you want to testify, Brother Hall? He said, oh, praise God. He said, testify? I said, I've gained 35 pounds. He stood up there, and I'll tell you, that started to rolling right then. And that they taken, and doctor taken that man to the hospital and put him under x-ray and tried every way they could and couldn't find one speck of the cancer. He weighs 185 pounds. That's been two years ago, and he's in perfect health, living in Milltown, Indiana, tonight. Call him up at my expense with Georgie Carter. By the way, talking of the doctor, if you'd happen to call him asking this, a few days ago, I don't know where you'd appreciate me telling this in the audience or not, but he's a fine fellow. And just remember, you that criticize doctors, be careful what you're doing. A lot of them are fine-believing Christian men. When I went into Africa, it was only there one night. And the medical association called me up the next morning, gave me the right hand of fellowship, and said, the entire hospital through South Africa is open to you. I said, that's truly divine healing. And we believe it in that way. I said, thank you. <laughs> that's right. And they come down and had breakfast. Wanted to, wanted to have breakfast. Of course, I, some of those heavy meetings you don't eat. Just wait on the Spirit of the Lord. The doctor walked into my house, and he said, my wife comes to Dr. Dares and... Uh, out there on a porch wanted to see, and I had a group of people in the room. I said, put him in the den room. I knew it was something. I went out and said, what's the matter, doctor? He told me. And he was trying to buy. He said, Billy, do you think this city ought to have a clinic? I said, every city ought to have a clinic. He said, you ought to have a good doctor? I said, every city. He said, do you think that I'd be counted a worthy doctor? I said, I, I don't see who else would be any more worthy. I said, you're sympathetic? He said, most of my practice are poor people, Billy. He said, I don't go to church as much as you should, but said, um, they come in if they need surgery. He said, I give it to them. Don't even charge them for it. You know, that's, that's just the way I serve God. I said, well, that's not the correct way of doing it, but that's good. That's good. And I said, the way you have to do is be born again to serve God. And he said, well, I come to ask you a question. He said, I read in the Bible where they used to come and ask people different things. If it was consulting, he said, I've got a problem. And he told me about where he wanted to put up a clinic. And he couldn't get that place. That woman wouldn't let him have it at all. I said, let's pray. So we got down and prayed. He said, there's not another place in the city that I could put it. And it was down in a very uh, bad district. I don't seem like it shouldn't be there. While I was praying, I seen another place on Wall and Market. In the vision, I seen a, a, a red brick clinic sitting there. So after prayer, I said, Dr. Adair... Forget about that down there. This big lot over here on the corner of Wall and Maple is right in the best spot of the city. The Lord gives you that. He said, Billy, said, son, said, I'll just chase that through court for the last six weeks. Said, that can't be touched for 25 years. Said, it's sold up in some airs in Boston or somewhere up there. And said, it cannot be touched for 25 years. I said, Dr. Adair, he's just told me it's yours. And you're going to have a red brick clinic sitting there. I said, son, said, I, I don't see how that can happen. And I said, well, he just said so. Well, I said, I just come from the court case of it two days ago. He said, it can't be touched. I said, there's no need of trying it. I said, well, just don't argue with me. Just go believe what I've told you because the Lord has given it to you. The next morning, the phone rang, and he called me up. He said, Billy, I'm freezing to death. I said, what's the matter with you? He said, chills are running all through me. I said, they had a meeting in Boston last night and put the lot up, and I've already bought it already this morning. And tonight, that's been about it, uh, eight months ago, and there's a big, fine medical clinic sitting on the same place, built out of red brick, just the way the Lord showed it. Yesterday after leaving, or day before yesterday after leaving there, I was in there talking to him, and we was rehearsing it over. He said, Billy, I've told it to thousands of people that's come back and forth through here of what God did for him that night. Come to God sincerely. Don't doubt nothing. Have faith in God. Now, when God shows, God will do. What God says, God's under obligation to His Word. Now, Christian friends, this is first. This is God's Word. Any kind of a ministry that's built upon anything else besides this is an error. That's God's Word primarily, first, basic. But then... God can speak through His servants and gifts. Do you believe that? Then what He would say in the way what I've been testifying about of those things, that's God's Word secondarily. 
And if God should tell you a certain thing to do, you go do it. If you fail to do it, then it'd be just like you failed to do His Word here. If He said, Come to me, all you labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest, you fail to come, well, you just, that Word didn't do you any good. But He gave you an invitation, called you, and you didn't come, so then it wouldn't do no good. So while the Holy Spirit is a moving among the people, let me ask you, in the name of our dear Lord Jesus, to believe Him tonight with all your heart. If He was here tonight, he would do the same things that he did on the banks of Galilee and in the city of Jerusalem, Capernaum, and all throughout all Galilee. He would, in Judea, he would do the same thing. And here was his statement. Now to some of the newcomers, first time here, i just quote this again. Jesus did not claim to be a divine healer. And any man on this earth cannot claim and be rightly claimed to be a divine healer because there's no divine healers. Only God alone is a healer. Jesus said, The Son can do nothing. It's the Father that dwells in Him. He doeth the works. Is that right? It's Him that doeth the works. Jesus said, Now, Jesus passed by cripples, Blinds, twisted, lame, halt, all kinds of people, and never heal them. The Bible said he did it. Went through by the pool of Bethesda, there were great multitudes, many, many, many times more than here tonight, of crippled, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of that water, and never healed a one of them, went to a man laying on a pallet, and healed him, and went on. Why did he have such most compassion and pass all those crippled people? Because he said, I can do nothing except the Father shows me. St. John 5, 19, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. But what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. If you'll read carefully through the Scripture, it's always been down through all ages. Miracles are not performed by the will of man. It's by the will of God. God shows visions, sets people and tells them, Gideon and all down to like Elijah. A man come and said, well, we need to... One time it happened to be one of my managers, not Brother Baxter. But it was a man who was with us, one of the field managers. And a newspaper had made a very critical statement that was absolutely untrue. I can expect friendly criticism. But the criticism wasn't due because it was untrue. As long as it's truth, all right. But it wasn't true. And this manager said, Why don't you go out there and kneel on your knees and tell God to burn that place down? I said, Oh, brother, don't think. He said, What we need today is some more Elijahs. He said, Elijah would have called far out of heaven and said, Neither, How you done to the 50? Well, the brother was just mistaken. See, Elijah did not call far out of heaven only but when God showed him. He said, Oh, brother Branham said, Elijah just went out there and boldly challenged it. Come out and prove who's God. I said, No, he never. God told him first. Oh, he said, He never seen no vision. I said, Yes, he did. I said, When he said, When he put all the, his bullock and so forth on the altar and had poured the water up on it, he walked out and he said, God, I have did this at your command. Is that right? Then the fire began to fall. After he had completed everything, see, first it must be shown. Now, first thing, God's Word says that Jesus Christ healed you at Calvary when he died 1,900 years ago. The Word of God teaches that. Is that right? All right. Just as he was wounded for your transgression. You want to argue with me? <laughs> the man's there. And I do not see him as impossible for me to see him. Why, well, I have another sense. And that sense is feeling. And my feeling is just as direct as my seeing. Is that right? So now, I do not see him. It's impossible for me to see him. But he's there because I feel him. Now, it's impossible for me to feel him. He's out of my reach but I know he's there by sight. Now, how many senses control the human body? Five. See, taste, feel, smell, and hear. 
Is that right? Now, I see him now. My sight, my sense of sight says he's there. But my sense of feeling isn't active. Now, I know he's there, but the sense of feeling and my sight is inactive to him. Thank you very much. Hit something on the piano there, will you, sir? Just... How many hears that? How many seen that? <laughs> no, you never saw it. <laughs> you can't see it. Well, how do you know that was a, that was a music note? How do you know it was is that piano? Did you see it coming through the air? Taste it? Feel it? Smell it? But you know it was there, don't you? You heard it. Is that right? Now look what is faith. Faith is the sixth sense. Five senses control this man. God put man in five senses to contact his earthly home. You don't contact God with your five senses. You know God by faith, which is the sixth sense, which is the, the two senses of the soul, faith and unbelief. And if you're possessed with faith, Faith is just as real, much reality to you as sight is. If you believe that shirt's white tonight, if you got sight and have faith in your sight and you say that shirt's white, if you believe Jesus Christ heals you at Calvary just and your faith will declare to you as much as what your sight does to this, you're healed right now. It's over. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you do not see, taste, feel, smell, nor hear. You believe it. So well, I don't feel any different. You're not supposed to feel any different. You're supposed to believe. Is that right? The Lord bless you. Have faith in God. Now, don't make out like you got faith. Really have faith. And I thank the Heavenly Father tonight with all my heart for giving His manifestations to His people, to, through His Word, through His power, through His gifts, and to show to the people in this day that we're living in, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Shall we bow our heads? I'm sorry to take that much time. Father in heaven, send down the Holy Spirit in great power tonight. Confirm thy word everywhere. May every person that's sick in this building go out of here walking, leaping, praising God. May they be in the city tomorrow testifying. The meeting's coming close now to the end. And I pray, God, that you'll do something that'll start an old-fashioned revival here in this city and throughout the country. Grant it, Lord. We know that Jesus is coming. We do not know when, but we believe that it's soon. And I pray that you'll make the people ready. If there be sinners here tonight, even and above all the sick to be healed, grant that the sinner will become a believer tonight and accept Christ as his personal Savior. Grant it, Lord. Hear us now and answer prayer. And may that lovely Jesus, your beloved Son, our Savior, may he come tonight and dwell with his people and do signs and wonders before them as he did when he was here in a body of flesh. He said, A little while and the world will see me no more. Yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. Grant it tonight, Father, for we ask it in his name. Amen. As you can, pray. Believe God. What we have your name and address for there, we want to write to you after it's over. See what's happened. See what, how you're getting along. Now, God is the only one who can help you. We're all aware of that. And now be real reverent. And let's just hum once been up, talk kind of long and uh, waiting for his presence. Let's kind of hum, only believe. Now, come on together, kind of slowly, like, only believe. All things are possible.
Briggs. There was a little baby who had epilepsy. They had a, a rag wrapped around a clothespin. He's having a fit right on the platform. And I would ask our Heavenly Father, I said, we'll all bow their heads. And yet there was some resentment. You could feel it way back, probably almost as long as this building. It's 28,000 people there. So there was, it was almost at the way out towards the yard part of the place. Just kept resentment coming. Now look, it was a minister and about eight or ten of his people. And I said to the usher, I said, go have that minister to put his head down. The usher come back in a few moments. He said, he said, this is a public place of worship. He didn't have to do it. I said, sir, you won't put your head down? He said, he sat there with his head up. I said, all right. You, you, that's your American privilege. But remember, I'm not responsible. And the little baby in a hard fit. I said, Heavenly Father, don't let the innocent have to suffer for the guilty. I ask you to heal the little baby in the name of your son, Jesus. The spasm left the little baby. And so I said, well, we're very thankful. And the little baby went off, and I heard a commotion, and the whole group struck with epilepsy. Right there and around. Now, you just write to Richard T. Reed, Jonesboro, Arkansas, the blessed old Bible Hour Tabernacle, and see that. The whole group had epilepsy and still got epileptic fits. I can prove these, some of these statements here I'm saying by government statistics, or government write-ups, officials, FBI agents who's come right in the meeting and followed it and watched it and wrote it up. We're not playing church, friend, so be reverent, see, be reverent. Now, listen, some you believing tonight that the Lord Jesus uh, is here in the building and can make you well, uh -huh. you do that. If, do you believe that those things that you see and hear, is this your first meeting to be into? No. You've I'm been in other meetings. St. Petersburg and in Flint, Michigan. Oh, you've been in Flint, Michigan to the meeting. Right. But I was well, down if he was at St. Petersburg. I see. Now... Only God alone could help you. Mm -hmm. Now, you, uh, you just told me what your trouble was of having a heart ailment. Mm -hmm. That is true. You are, maybe then, being that you told me what was wrong with you, maybe the Lord will say something else to you. So just for exercising your faith, you see. Now, do you believe me to be his prophet? You do that. Now, I say that humbly, you see, just for he said this, if you get the people to believe you and then be sincere when you pray, that's what it would take place. You're a minister also. Is that right? Yes, sir. And haven't you just come from across some water somewhere from overseas? Just come back from England. God bless you. Now, do you believe? Yes, sir. Go get well of your heart trouble now. The Lord bless you. Yes, sir. God be with you now, and you're going to get well. And God bless you. Let's say thanks be to God. See, just to talk just a little. Now, I want you to be real reverent out there now and believe with all your heart. Do you believe it was the truth? Uh, do you... You're, you're thinking about somebody, aren't you? You're concerned about somebody. It's your baby. Is that right? The little boy laying there. Just have faith in God. God can do it if you'll just believe. All right, bring the baby. How do you do, sister? Do you believe with all your heart? I truly believe that. I believe that you are a believer. Anyone in that attitude could surely touch the heart of God. You are, you are, are sick, and you're. A, there's something wrong with your blood. Anemic condition, isn't that right? You have asthmatic condition also, isn't that true? 
And you bet something about a doctor. No, the doctor's been looking at this baby. Is that right? That baby's sick also. Oh, the baby's worse than you are. The baby is anemia also and is a rupture. Isn't that right? And I see the doctor shake his head. That, the doctor can't do nothing for that baby. That's, isn't that right? That's right. Raise up your hand. Can God make you both well? You accept healing for both of you? Now, the doctor's done all he can do. He's sincere about that. But God can help you now. Do you believe it? Lord Jesus, I pray for mercy for this darling baby. Mother, may they both go home tonight. And by your stripes, may they be healed. May Satan not be able to touch them. Come out of them, Satan. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I bless thee, my sister, and I bless the baby. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who knows your life and the baby's also. Now, do you believe you're going to be well? You shall have it. God bless you. Go. Let's say thanks be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Every person in you ought to believe right now. The angel of God whose picture is on this paper, who is scientifically known throughout the entire world at this time, he is right here in this audience right now. He isn't standing but a few feet from where I am. Someday at the day of judgment, you will see I've told you the truth. He's right here now. And heal any person that will believe on him. Believe on Jesus Christ that he has healed you. Have faith in God. God knows all things, doesn't he? Believe him. Where's that lady that was just he healed just then with that baby? I thought so. I seen you standing above her here in a shadow, and I looked around. I thought, well, here stands that woman right here. And I've seen you together. You're suffering with heart trouble, aren't you? Just go on back to your seat. Thanks. God bless you. Happy step the Lord Jesus. Have faith. All things are possible if you can believe it. How do you do? You have a stomach trouble, don't you? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. It's kind of a parasite. It gets into your stomach. Causes you lots of trouble. I know what they are. I've had them myself. Yes, sir. Well, the Lord Jesus made me well, son. He can you also. Say, you've come a long ways to get here too, haven't you? You've been hitchhiking to get here or something or another. I've seen you on the road moving with you. Is that right? Don't you come from a country that's got a lot of plains or something other like that? I'd say out in the west somewhere. Yes. Is that right? Now go home. You're going to get well and be a normal man again. Your faith has saved you, son. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. It's all right. Go right in. Let's say thanks be to God. Have faith. And believe the Lord Jesus. How many believe that Jesus raised from the dead? Do you believe that he's sure tonight that's the same Lord Jesus that rose from the dead? Working among man? Well, have faith in him. And he'll grant it. The same Lord Jesus that raised from the dead. Now look, when he rose from the dead, he went on his road to Emmaus, some people did. I just want to talk a moment of when an anointing gets real deep. Sometimes I just can't hold myself together like. But listen closely now. On the road to Emmaus, he met some of the disciples, and they talked with him all day. And when he got there that night, there's a certain thing that he'd done just in a certain way that they knew that was him. Is that right? Now, he's been with you all day. He's been with many of you for years. Is that right? Now watch the way he does things. 
It's, haven't you seen him in your life, the way he done things? When he saved you out of that accident, when he saved you from that sick spell, when you was, had no money and somebody brought some groceries in? You know what I mean, don't you? That's just the way he does things. See? He's with us. He's raised from the dead. He's here tonight. Amen. All right. Come, young fellow. Now have faith in God and believe him. God shall grant all things. Now, I just want to speak to you a moment. Do you believe that what you see is the truth? You do? <clears throat> now, quickly, when my spirit goes to meet yours, there's something wrong. You're a sick man. You're diabetic. Is that right? And you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. As a sinner, you need Jesus Christ as Savior. Is that right? Don't you want a blood transfusion for both soul and body tonight, young man? You accept him as your Savior right now. I believe you're standing in his presence. You do. If you accept him and testify to this people that you now accept Christ as your Savior, ask him for mercy, raise your hand and turn to the people. Come here. Lord Jesus, forgive him of every trespass, every sin. God, I pray that you'll heal the boy and may go out of here and live a normal life. Be perfectly well. Forgive every sin and take him into your kingdom tonight. In Jesus Christ's name I ask it. Amen. God bless you, young man. Go rejoicing. You feel like God has saved you now your sins are gone? You go, to, go join some good church and live for Christ. You're going to be well too, brother. God bless you. Some ministers should speak to the boy immediately about coming into the to the church and getting him baptized. Let's say we thank thee, Lord. We thank thee, Lord. And have mercy is our, our sincere prayer for each one. All right, bring the lady. Now, you must believe with all your heart, and with all your soul, and all your mind to be healed. And do you do this, lady? Uh, do you believe that you're standing, not your brother here, but you're in the presence of him, the supernatural one, who had his picture taken on this paper here? You do. You're married? Could I speak to you to one side just a moment? You all just sing only believe if you will now. Only believe. Only believe. Oh. Just something that was, couldn't be said before audience. It was a, that only God himself would know in that manner. Is that right, young lady? That's right. And just it couldn't be said before an audience. The vision came, and when it left me, I walked over and spoke to her about it. And she holds her hand. That's the honest truth. And no one could be at this place but she and God alone. That's right. Now come near. You believe if I ask the blessing for you that God will answer my prayer? Our Heavenly Father, as this woman here, just in uh, not exactly understanding just what this trouble is, Lord, I pray for mercy for her. And may she be made well. Thou art here, Father, and can make her well. And in commemoration of your Son's word, Jesus, the last words that fell from his sacred lips when he went up into heaven, promising to return again, be with us even to the end of the age. Said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And yonder, Lord, that night when the angel of the Lord come and said, Go and be sincere and get the people to believe you and pray sincerely, and nothing shall stand before the prayer. You're still God. You still exist. You're still here. And I ask for her healing. Lord, spare her young life. I ask in Christ's name. Amen. It's, it's, it's a 
serious thing, but I believe you're going to be well. I believe you're going to be all right. The Lord Jesus bless you now as you go. Let's say thanks be to our Lord. Have faith. You know, go over your back. Be made well. You believe it, he will. If you believe it, I'll uh, ask him then, he'll do it and make you well. Or come here just a minute. Father, I ask you to be merciful. Heal the woman, Lord. I pray for your glory. Grant, Lord, that the power that raised Christ from the dead will strengthen her now and take this strangling spirit away from her. And may she go be made well through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You believe now? You believe it'll leave you? How long has it been bothering you? Years. This drives it choking on, unseen. It, you couldn't see it from the outside, of course. No. But it, it's not only that, but it's growth also in there. Yes. You have growth plus the inward garden. Is that true? See? Just so that you it should know that I understand what I'm speaking of. Now, if you just go and don't doubt nothing, see, just go thanking God. And now, within about 72 hours, if our prayer is answered, you'll become sick, real sick, about three days and nights, see. You'll become sick, headaches, nauseous. Don't get worried. That's why, that's when you can thank God then. It's gone. God bless you. God be with you. Let's say praise be to God who gives us the victory. Come, sister dear. Do you believe with all your heart? Believe that God will make you well? That's your mother? It is. <clears throat> I thought so. <laughs> You're praying. You have a serious thing, don't you, son? Something wrong with you. You just kind of lose your memory like you can't think of things. Isn't that true? Is that right? <laughs> mother there has a heart trouble. It's suffering with nervousness. Isn't that right? That's your mother. Is that right? If that's right, raise up your hand. See, this woman had heart trouble, too. Them demons were pulling one to another. God bless you both. Now go and get well, both of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you, young man, and grant to you the same thing. God be with you. Lord bless you. Let's say the thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right. Come now, believing. You believe it? He'll make you well, sister? With all your heart? Restore to you this uh, affliction and make you a well girl again? Yes. You'll serve him all your life if he'll heal you? Yes. Our Heavenly Father, I ask for mercy and kindness to our sister. And may the evil one leave. I pray in Jesus Christ's name that he'll go from her. Amen. Now you're all right. You believe that? Yes. You hear me all right now? Yes. Can you understand me okay? Yes. How long have you been this way? Every time, baby. Ever since a little baby. Mm -hmm. You understand all right now? Yes. All right, you're healed. It's gone from you. The Spirit left you, and you go home and rejoice now. God bless you. Let's say thanks be to God. Come, little lady. You believe with all your heart? What if the Lord Jesus would just, just say what was wrong with you? Would you believe, Brother Branham? You do? You like to go to Sunday school? You're a mighty sweet little girl, pretty little girl. And I, I, you, in the way young girls are going today, won't you serve Jesus that he'll make you well? You've had a kidney trouble, honey, all for years and years. Isn't that right? God bless you. Come here just a minute. Lord Jesus, this darling little thing, I pray that you will help her now seeing this condition. May the evil spirit go away from the child, and I bless the child for its healing. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, I've tried hard, honey, but you're going to get well. Now, don't you fear. You go right on and love Jesus, and God's going to make you well. Let's say thanks be to Lord, our Lord. Now, sister, do you believe while you're sitting there in the chair with all your heart? Would you like to get over that female trouble that you've had with that? Uh, or just go ahead and believe the Lord Jesus right now, and you'll get, you'll get well of it. God bless you. Amen. 
Come here, I want to touch your hand just before going. God, be merciful to her, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you, sister. Let's say thanks be to our Lord. If you believe now, don't doubt. Now come, lady. Wasn't it kind of a strange thing when I said female trouble to her? <laughs> it's the same thing with you, see. I go ahead and just praise God. Say, thank you, Lord, for my healing. Let's say praise be to the Lord Jesus. All right, would you come, little lady? What do you think? Uh, that, that isn't to hurt you, sister dear. It's the thing that'll heal you. Don't be fearful, you see. It's nothing that'll hurt you. Look here at me just a minute. Do you believe me to be God's servant, sister, with all your heart? I see you are a Christian. Now, I want to ask you something. You've got a dreadful disease, the third killer of the world, TB. Do you know it? It's TB. It's what's wrong with you. Now, the Lord Jesus can make you ever with hope. Don't fear, Mother. It'll be all right. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for this young woman right here in the adolescent age. I ask for mercy. May this evil thing that's hid from the doctors, they've tried, but it doesn't do any good. But he can't hide from you, God. You know right where he's at. May he come out of the little girl in the name of Jesus Christ. And I bless thee, my sister, for thy healing. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, sister. Don't doubt. Now go rejoice and happy. You're going to get well. Have faith. All right. Now, Mother, yours is number one killer, heart trouble. It, it usually takes the people right quick. That's right, isn't it? That's right. It's smothering in your heart, and when you lay down, it gets bad, and, it, and you have fluttering spells and blacking out spells and things with it. See, your life could not be hid. You've had a lot of trouble in life, a lot of sorrow and operations and things. Isn't that right? See, I'm not reading your mind, but I, I know what, what... Is that true? Now, come here a minute. Lord God, to the faith of this woman, while thy servant's strength is fastly fading away, I pray, God, that you'll be merciful to her, and may she go from here tonight and be made well. Through Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, sister. Go happy, rejoicing, and thanking God, and be made well. Oh, how wonderful. How we can, if you could only believe him, have faith in him. Of course, there's no doing me saying what's taking place at this time. It would be hard for you to believe. I hardly see the audience back in there. The, it's such a, something. There's no need to be trying to explain it. Just you just just be reverent. All right, come, Mister, and have faith in God. All right, just be as reverent as you can be now. How do you do, sir? Do you believe, sir, with all your heart? Wall. Right there. You're both preachers. Is that right? That's right. You have a stomach trouble, and he has a rupture. Is that right? Lord, God bless your servant. May he go home and be well, and may that one sitting there do likewise, Lord. I pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Go eat what you want to now. It's a nervousness just from your ministry and stuff. It's what's got you shut up. You're going to be all right. Peptic ulcer condition is what does it. Just have faith and believe God with all your heart. What about you, sister? You believe, too? The gallbladder trouble and things, what you, you need him, don't you? Isn't that your husband sitting here next to you? Is that right? <laughs> I thought that's what it was. You accept your healing now? Raise up your hand and say, Christ, I accept it, both of you. God bless you. Right across his hand there sits a lady with female trouble, too. Is that right, lady? Second one in the... Is that right? Raise up and accept your healing. You believe? Stand to your feet. So I accept my healing. God bless you. Believe him? Believe that God will make you well? There's somebody I can't tell right here, right over this, uh, this section in this way. I see a little child that's got kidney trouble. But I can't place where it's at. 
God bless you. Uh-huh. And there's a little girl standing by him that's having convulsions. Is that yours? God bless you. Lay your hands up on it, on the child, a little boy. Right, sir. You're healed. Almighty God, author of life and giver of every good gift, send your blessings upon this side people tonight, Lord. Heal the people here in this audience at this time. Through Jesus Christ's name. I wonder while you're standing or sitting with your heads bowed, I want to ask you a question. I want you to be sincere with me. Is there a sinner in here tonight that would say, I want to accept Christ as my Savior, and I believe that He's raised from the dead. I've wanted to be a Christian for a long time. God bless you, lady. God bless you. Someone else raise your hand and say, Brother Branham, I, God bless you, sir. Standing saying, God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Over in the aisles to my left. God bless you all over there. Raise up your hand and say, I want to accept Christ. Would you stand to your feet, you that want to accept Christ as personal Savior right now? is convinced that He's here. And if you'll hear my prayer to reveal things, the Holy Spirit said to me, I started to call another person sitting right here. The lady sitting there with eye trouble sitting there just got healed. I started to call her. The Holy Spirit said, make an altar call. I've got to be obedient. You that wants to accept Christ as personal Savior and believe that you'll hear my prayer right now, stand to your feet all over the building, everywhere, every place. Would you stand to your feet? Everywhere. Rise up right now is the time to accept Him. Would someone else care to stand just at this time? God bless you, young couple. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sister. Just remain standing, everyone. Would you stand? God bless you, young man. Someone else say, I want to accept Christ right now. I believe He's here. My dear brother and sister, before God I line up, the angel of God that's here, this picture taken up, is right here at this platform tonight, right here now, directing me to make this altar call. Maybe the last chance for somebody. I don't know. There may be fixes, something fixing to happen, but He told me make this altar call right now. I've never done it before in my life like this. Would you stand? Anybody here is a sinner and wants to accept Christ as Savior, would you stand? God bless you. That's right, everywhere. I just remain standing a moment. Father, I do not know why that you have done this. Something strange has struck me. But I pray, God, that you will forgive every one of these who are standing now. May their sins be under the blood. I believe this is the call, this is the time. The angel of the Lord may spread forth his great wings over this building just now, and may the distilled dewdrops of mercy sprinkle up on every soul. Grant it, Lord, may the Holy Spirit in his great transforming power change the hearts of these people from doubt into faith, and may their testimony be great, and may they receive also the baptism of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ's name. Now, to you that standing believes that God forgives you your sins, raise your hand and say, I accept Him now as my personal Savior. Are you standing? You believe it, sister? God bless you. Leaving little children up and down the aisle. How many wants the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now? Would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Not ever received it. Wants to receive it? Stand to your feet. Now, let those who... All of you that wants the Holy Spirit... The baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you believe with all your heart. Those seekers go right straight to the tent right now. Come right down to the tent. Lordy, you coming out right now. Let's go to the tent. Come here, Reverend. Rest of you, bow your heads just a moment in prayer, if you will. All right. Amen. Let's all the hungry.